Okay, so how do you pass an hour or two on a nice sunny summer's afternoon using nothing but a piece of cotton, a stick, and a dead fly? Well, I'm about to show you. It's a brilliant little thing to do, especially if you've got slightly macabre tendencies. Um, it's also a great way of learning a little bit about the secret lives of one of our most common garden pond inhabitants, and that is a creature called the pond skater. So, first of all, it's a little bit fiddly, you will need a little bit of patience here as well. You have to tie one end of the cotton to one end of your stick. It's my very best granny knot. Okay, here comes the really fiddly bit. I've now got to attach the other end of the cotton to the dead fly. Now, you may be asking the question, where do you get a dead fly from? It's usually in the windowsill, that's a good place. This is like having to be a micro cowboy, I've got to make a tiny little lasso out of cotton and just slip it around the fly's body and then tie it tight, but not so tight that your whole fly falls to pieces. There we are. The fly is now attached. So, what are we going to go and do with my very strange uh, fishing setup? Well, I'm going fly fishing for pond skaters. And here we've got my pond. Now, any pond will do as long as it's got pond skaters on it. Pond skaters are these curious little creatures that we can see hopping and skipping and gliding and skating even across the pond surface. Now you might be thinking, what kind of creature is it? It's only got four legs, but look closely and you'll see it's actually got six. The four legs are the, the big ones, the obvious ones, and its other two legs, the mysterious missing legs, are actually held right at the front of the insect's body where they rest on the water surface. Now what they're doing here is making a living um, skating across the surface tension, the film that uh, is between the water in the pond and the air above. It's a very special environment, lots of very strange things happen here. Now some insects get trapped in it, so flies, moths, uh, spiders, many of them will fall into the water and get stuck on the surface tension. Our pond skaters have a special trick up their sleeve. They're covered in what you call hydrophobic hairs. They're hairs that don't wet, they're waterproof hairs, which means they can never get themselves wet. They've got special hairs on their legs as well, which hold their body up off the water surface, and they're able to almost effortlessly glide and flick and skate their way over the pond surface. Now, they are carnivores. They're a bug that feeds on other creatures. And just like all bugs, they have a very sharp pointed mouth part, very like a sharp straw. And they use that to pierce the bodies of their insect prey and suck up the juices. And that's exactly what we're about to demonstrate with my poor unfortunate dead fly. It'd be more unfortunate for him if he was alive because this is a very unpleasant way to go. So what you do is simply dangle your fly on the pond surface. Now the secret's in the wrist because what you've got to do is tweak your dead fly around like some kind of bizarre macabre puppet show creating ripples just like a real struggling insect on the surface of the pond and those ripples can be picked up by our pond skaters who have got also very sensitive hairs on their legs and on their body and uh, they will be able to tell exactly where that struggling insect is. Right I've got one on. The greatest thing about this is you can actually bring the fly and the pond skater, you can drag it nice and close. Look at that. His own feeding motions will attract other pond skaters. Pretty soon you'll have a whole pack of pond skaters all sticking their spiky mouth parts into the fly. It's like a sort of lions around the kill. It's kind of a watery Serengeti. They're such a specialist insect and doing something like this is a really, really good way of getting to know them because they're everywhere and we kind of take them for granted. And for me, there's very few better ways of spending a sunny Sunday.